welcome to Rigor Mortis Paranormal. Tonight's stories include orbs, haunted museums, ghostly screams from a deer blind, a demonic clown in a closet, and more paranormal tales from the other side. I am David, this is Robert and Jasmine. Hello, hello. Hey guys. All right, here we go. So orbs, deer blinds, and clowns. Oh my. Deer blind. <laughs> the deer blind, that one, I was looking a little bit at it, and it does look pretty good. That one threw me for a loop. It's a good story. I don't want to give it away until we start reading it. The only thing <laughs> that are haunted and deer blinds are like <laughs> when you got people up there that can't use a restroom. You know, they don't want to leave because they don't want, you know, that's a good spot. You spook the deers away. Oh, oh, or like yeah. you got to release the pressure valve, you know, let that one go. <laughs> <laughs> you will see people make noise, man. You know what? That, that scared the deer. I wonder if that would send a deer away. Yeah, you know what? Did, yeah that's I what mean, I was thinking, smell. too. Like, those guys who douse themselves, and it's true. I mean, y'all yeah. can look it up. I urine. know uh, the deer urine. Like, what's up with that? Like, yeah, it's like, oh, you guys are a bunch of fools. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to get something. Yeah, look at me. And just like, you know, just spraying deer piss on you. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be doing that. <laughs> So would that be a golden shower? I mean, <laughs> you know, think about it. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it. you know, in some countries you gotta pay good money for this. <laughs> I know. That's pretty horrible, man. <laughs> hey, you know what a deer blind is, Jess? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I've seen them on TV. <laughs> yeah, those so. things are, are like. First of all, I couldn't get up one. Yeah, I, I mean, seriously, I couldn't get up, especially if I were drinking up there. You know, all the guys, come on, Rob! I'll be like, uh, oh, I'm okay down here, guys. I'm going to take my chances down here. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, I started doing an Uber today. No shit! <laughs> yeah, just out of the blue, I was like, you know what the hell, I'm going to try this. A little extra cash, I mean, whatever. I hear that, uh, man, yeah. Sounded like fun. I love driving. I mean, I'm always driving to Boston, to California, or whatever. You know, and I try and do it without getting any sleep. And I've done it successfully. Well, yeah. I'm still here, so. <laughs> uh, but Uber, man, I tell you, trying to push the podcast and, you know, with some you of my... ghost stories yeah. out there? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to... Wait, wait, wait. Uh, to the... To your customers? To my customers. I, I'm like, uh, I have the, the podcast. Oh, they they? I mean, what they? <laughs> well, I got a one star today. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'll give you an extra 10 if you turn that off, man. Or like, <laughs> turn that <laughs> shit off. <laughs> yeah, what's with that guy? He's always taking a shit, man. I'm like, <laughs> how, no. how can he be so fat? <laughs> Yeah, so how was it, man? I mean, you know what? It was it was actually fun, and it's kind of neat because what I do for a living, I I play on the computer all day. All day, I'm I'm locked up in a little box. It's like a shoe box. My home office. Mm -hmm. I do like web design, and marketing, and stuff. Anyway, it gets old, man. It's like I want to get out. I want to hit the road. So I thought, you know what, Uber, man. I love driving. I was like, you know what, screw it, man. This would be a nice way to get out of the house for a little bit and make money at the same time. So you um, customers cool? Everybody was cool today so far. I'm crossing my fingers it keeps <laughs> up that way. Like this. I'm not gonna do the the midnight stuff. Because oh, I'm, oh yeah, I, I like my vehicle and I don't want I don't want shit or puke in my back seat where my kids sit. So I'm like, uh, huh? <laughs> might not be doing that stuff. Oh man, <laughs> I can't imagine that. Yeah, I would, that sounds pretty cool. What happens if you do get somebody that's just like a pain in the ass or just like a difficult a difficult rider? There you man, go. Man, you know what? I don't know. I'm learning all this as I'm going, man. Actually, the the riders were actually helping me today. You know, they're telling me, oh yeah, you this and that. I was all worried because I got caught by a train so I'm like oh dude you know it's like only my second pickup that I've ever done in my life and I'm like I want to get five star rating and all you read about before is like five star rating five star five star so then I get this train I'm like oh crap man it's like I can't get this lady in time so I start I was like screw it man I get up <laughs> pull a dig's hazard and I did, wait man. for the flat <laughs> flat, flat, the flat freight car so you can jump over <laughs> I'll get I you there like, man <laughs> well I went all the way around I went a totally opposite direction and so you know it said you'll be there in six minutes at first my app's telling me and then uh uh, when it turned around, it changed to like 11 minutes. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, and the thing is, they could see that on their end. So, that they, so I know she sees it. I'm like, oh. so I'm doing like 80 in this, you know, 45 mile an hour zone. Just <laughs> trying to hurry up and get there. <laughs> and then when I get there, I was like, man, I'm sorry. You need all my five stars. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, it, uh, I got caught by a train, you know, and I'm trying to explain. I'm thinking, oh, please, man, please. And little did I know, she's like, oh, no, I know it told me. The app tells me. I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm doing 80 for nothing. I mean, the app actually told her that I was stuck on a train. So I'm like, oh, crap, man. I was like, all right, whatever. So she was cool about the whole thing. Yeah, man. If you get stuck with like somebody that's a pain in the ass, 
you can rate them, right? Yeah, I can rate the customers too. So uh, um, yeah. yeah, if they're an asshole or if they puke in my car, I can give them a, <laughs> I can give them a one star. And I, I, I oh, if they geez. puke in the car, supposedly I can call Uber. I don't know if they'll reimburse me or not. Maybe well, one yeah, of the listeners out there. They're, they're not gonna go clean it for you. Well, here's the money. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah you know. Here's, and here's a coupon. Yeah, here's, I'm like this is my cousin. <laughs> yeah, I was like he does five, good work. Five dollars, <laughs> you know, some, you know. Yeah, actually, he just owns a car wash. You still have to put in the work. You're like, ah, oh, fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, I like to drive also. I know you were talking about that earlier, Jazzy, that you like to drive also in something in the blood, I guess. But man, I like to drive. My cars are pieces of shit. <laughs> 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 I mean, man, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I can't guarantee you I can make it 15 miles, but uh, we can get close. <laughs> yeah, they got all the wrappers from food in there. <laughs> oh, never mind the beer cans. Just scoot them aside. Oh, yeah, you'll be oh fine. Right? <laughs> There's a fucking rat in there. There's a rat. <laughs> that's horrible. Oh, man. Um, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, you got to have your car clean. That's the other thing. So, man, I... <laughs> I had to go clean my yeah, mine, yeah, mine isn't the, the fragrant in there isn't very pleasant in there either because there was soda in there. I don't know who dropped it and all soda smells like ass, man. I mean, I'd rather... I'm serious. It stinks bad. I mean... I've never smelled old soda. Right? You, yeah, I you smell remember. mom's car. I know you have, it smells terrible. I'd rather have old diapers in there because it just stinks, man. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I'm going to try it for a little bit. Let's see what happens That's with cool, this, man. That's great. Uber thing. I think I would have a blast doing that also. It's fun, man. I, I love driving, man. I guess it runs in the family, man. Man. I like uh, <laughs> I like eating too, man. Yeah. Drinking. <laughs> runs in the family too. Eating runs in the family too. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the first story we got here today? We have the haunted deer blind story. This story was written in by Miguel. Miguel uh, writes, What's up, rigor mortis crew? I wanted to tell you something that happened to me while hunting on my uncle's land in the Texas Hill Country. Very nice. Texas Hill Country. Yeah. I don't know y'all Texas familiar. Texas Hill Country is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, and it actually snows down there. Very nice. A lot of good hunting down there also. It was a cold night, and I had been in a deer blind most of the day. I am an avid hunter, and I have bagged a couple of white-tailed deer in that same blind. And it was one of my favorite spots. Well, as I was sitting there, I thought I heard a woman crying. Then I heard what sounded like two people arguing, with the woman still crying, only this time her cries seemed more desperate and more terrifying, as almost being attacked. This was very frightening because I was the only person out there. There shouldn't have been anyone out there on my uncle's land. I grabbed my rifle, my flashlight came down off the blind, there was no one around. This particular part of land was around 12 miles away from any houses or people, just a dirt trail leading to the blind. I know what I heard and it was clear as day. I headed back up the blind and thought maybe I was hearing things. Well about an hour later, as I was settling in for the night, I heard a woman scream. This scream was so loud it sounded as if it were inside the blind with me. I jumped up with my rifle, scared shitless. I was like, what the hell was that? This time, when I came down to investigate, I brought down all my shit and didn't see anything at all. Needless to say, I headed down the trail where I parked my truck and got the hell out of there. I asked my uncle the next morning if he ever heard anything in that hunting blind and he told me that he didn't like that spot because it was a creepy place. That he would hear strange things out there. He never told me what he heard, but I know I have not been back to that deer blind in years. Anyway, thanks for hearing my story. I love your show. Take care. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> Hearing screaming in a deer blind. That, yeah, that's weird. I uh, would fly out of that deer blind <laughs> if it was right inside of there with me. <laughs> I was looking at this story. I read it before because I have this habit of trying to research a lot of stuff. Here goes my squeaky chair again. He's not real specific about it. It's just hill country. Hill country is everywhere. Bernie, Fredericksburg. It's all up there. It's all nice country. Yeah. So I went and I looked under like unsolved murders or something that happened. And I really didn't find anything in that nature. Any kind of murders or anything like that. But... Who's to say why that is happening there? Maybe something tragic did happen and nobody knows about it out there. You know, yeah, maybe there's some true. bones laying out there that nobody knows about. That's just something that I, you know, when I was reading about, I was like, I wonder if that's what happened, you know? Yeah. So it's just kind of creepy to me. I just. Yeah, that's some weird stuff. That's an unusual story. I mean, you don't hear stuff like that often. <laughs> that's why I said, mean, you know what? Just being out there. I love being, uh, I like the outdoors too, but I'm not a really giant outdoors person <laughs> because I right. need the necessities of like AC, a toilet, and just, you know, 
about stuff like now we have all these these shows you know that dual survivor and what's that other one yeah. butt naked and afraid yeah here you go yeah you know you need cause, man that's, they have the xl yeah <laughs> that's for me I don't know what that... <laughs> that's what i'm thinking man because like i mean first of all i don't know how those guys do it man they got all those mosquitoes and then they gotta sleep in the heat and all that and then venomous critters all around them and, stuff. and then they're butt naked man i mean first of all i know if the producers saw me no 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 you know what uh go ahead and get dressed and we'll, we'll give, you know i know that's not we'll gonna call one tool that you yeah, bring. yeah 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 the tool that i bring is gonna be a bag of chips or something like that oh, you guys are all fools yeah and then after i'm done eating them like i want to go home <laughs> and you know my partner <laughs> she's gonna be on there didn't something oh no no i'm like yeah. <laughs> yeah like oh no we gotta cover that I'm like, what you making a, a shelter I'm like no it's a cover that big ass <laughs> here's a clover leaf for the front <laughs> but i'm just saying how do they do uh i admire that because man those guys who make it 21 days and now they have the other one like you said the xl you gotta admire people that do that i just couldn't i don't know how they do that yeah no kidding to be out there like this well i mean this guy here at least he had a deer blind and stuff like that and then what do you do when you hear somebody yelling and inside you're out your there yeah. most of the time you're out there alone yeah for hours at yeah. a time and it's so. the longest walk too to your truck right you're just like oh my god you know like <laughs> looking over your shoulder like you know well hearing people argue and then hearing somebody yelling and you're blind i mean that's creepy man what what, is, what brought what is that up I mean? and why there, it, you know? Yeah. Was somebody arguing there maybe at one point in time? And, and it just because he made it sound like the arguing got worse. And it got almost to a threatening part yeah. where she actually was yelling and maybe being at attacked or something. Do you think it has maybe something to do with him bagging the deer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe he's a, the mom to the deer. Yeah, disapproval. Yeah. The dad came by. Yeah. Yeah. The father deer came out. Like, what the hell is this guy doing? What's your intention with my dough? <laughs> oh my lord! <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I just had to throw that out there. But no. <laughs> sorry, Miguel. Man, damn. <laughs> Not trying to make light of your story, Miguel. You yeah, I don't know. It gives a new meaning for hunting deer, I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miguel. Man, my bad, brother. Man, I wish we could find out what city that yeah, is no so we could do more research. But uh, anyway, Miguel, so thank cool. you for that. That's a great one, man. Yeah. I think the next one is going to be a Norb story. Yeah, we got this one on Norb. It was a phone call, which is really great. Why don't we listen to okay, it? Okay, let's do This is Mary Ellen calling from Texas. I have a little story that happened to my mother. It happened around the 1960s. My mother was on her, I think, third pregnancy. And um, my mother used to go to church every Sunday. There was not one day that she wouldn't go. She would make it every Sunday, no matter what. During one of her pregnancies, which was a third child that she had, my sister, my mother went into labor, which was on uh, Friday. Well, she wasn't able to make it to church. And one night she was at home, I guess it was a week after. And what happened is that she was at home and then my dad was always in and out working, staying eight hours, sometimes would come and then leave, leave my mom by herself there with the kids. My mom was laying in bed with my older sisters where there were babies. One of them was like two years old, the other one was one, and then she had a newborn baby in her arm. And she said she was laying on the bed and it was real dark. And she said that all of a sudden she saw something like a little ball. I can't explain it the way she explained it to us when we were growing up, but she said it was this little ball, like just floating. Like it was a far distance, like just floating. Don't know if it was red, yellow, white, however it was, but it was small. It was just floating. And she started praying because all of a sudden that ball started coming towards her. She said it came real fast and it just, when she started praying, it just disappeared. Um, I kind of wonder why that happened to her. Could it be something trying to warn her? Why would something like that just appear? I just kind of, you know, wanted to call this and share this with you guys. Thank you. I know there's a lot of stories that I do have. We'll call y'all later on and share this with y'all. Thank you very much, guys. Y'all are doing a good job. I enjoy listening to y'all. Bye-bye. That's why 
grandma should have went to church that night. No, <laughs> no I, I think that's what she's trying to say. I think yeah, that's that's what it sounds like to me. I'm looking at it from a different perspective because she sounds like a totally religious woman that she's going to yeah. church all the time. And the only time she didn't go is because she just had a baby. Great reason not to go. I mean, I understand right, she I was would, feeling guilty or something. I would think God would understand that. But, uh... <laughs> I, I'm sure he did. But that's what I'm saying that you think that maybe like she was just consumed by guilt because she didn't go. Maybe this thing was actually just telling her, hey, how you doing? Everything okay? You're fine. Don't worry about it. That's true. We'll see you next week. Maybe they're checking on her, you know, just to make, to make sure everything's cool. Okay. This poor woman, she's going to church every Sunday and she had to miss, you know, and I'm sure God, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, yeah, you know, and I'm sure God was like, you know, hey, we'll catch you next week. That's probably why he said it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like she, she had a real guilt trip about me. Yeah, exactly, you know, so that's, uh, you don't find them like that much yeah, anymore. No. <laughs> probably a good thing, I would think. I would maybe. imagine. You know, if you're that scared of missing church, can you imagine what kind of person that is? That's awesome, man. We have real feelings of guilt, like, you know, I peed on the seat or the yeah. toilet or, you know, Sometimes I eat somebody's yeah. food that it didn't belong to me. Yeah. And I knew it didn't. didn't. My dad's notorious for that. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, who? I don't even ask whose it is. And I was like, yummy. Right. And like, somebody wakes up and they have no lunch tomorrow. <laughs> My dad's favorite line. It's yours now. <laughs> But th this here, I can understand. That was kind of cool, too. Like, I imagine it probably really scared her big time, seeing that thing coming up to her. And yeah. And then she said she wouldn't pray. So maybe some one of the angels like, hey, hey, you're scaring her. Let's just come on back up. Right. Man. She's okay, you know? <laughs> Calling the angel back, yeah. <laughs> but, I, like, I'm fairly religious, and I feel guilty enough not going to church. Right. Exactly, yes. Uh, just for somebody who goes every Sunday. Like, you can imagine, right. yeah, exactly what you're saying. You, you get you get that guilt trip, so... I'm surprised you don't have more hauntings, Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm always like, next Sunday, for sure, next Sunday. I'm going, yeah, I know, yeah. Are, are we going to go eat after that? <laughs> you going to Saturday night mass. <laughs> yeah, instead of getting orbs, you should have... Uh, <laughs> the should real have demons, right? Demons <laughs> around your bed and shaking your bed and... <laughs> No. Oh <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, you know, that was an awesome story, Mary. Thank you for that one. Next, what do we have? We're going to be talking a museums. Yep. Oh, that's yes. some cool stuff. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. San Antonio is famous for having a lot of hot spots. We're such a historical city that you got so many places, not even the museums are safe. David, man, that's a really good one. You yeah. want to do the honors? Or yeah, I'll do this. I'll, I'll read this one here. This story comes to us from Rachel. Rachel writes, I started working for this museum on the east side of San Antonio. As a kid, I remember going to school field trips there and never really remembered it looking too scary. I guess with hundreds of school kids and teachers from several schools there at once, it couldn't possibly look scary. But it's a different story as an adult working early in the morning with only you and one co-worker in the building. The lights were always so dim throughout the museum, it would make your mind play tricks on you. It was always two housekeepers in the main museum and one in the other part of the museum located outside in another building. A somewhat newer building, but still just as scary when you had to work in it alone for hours until the museum opened up. We had a security officer who walked around sometimes but mostly stayed in the office, monitoring the TV screens. There was also a security officer who worked the graveyard shift. It didn't help any of us when the officers would tell us about things they saw on the screens or experienced while patrolling the museum. I had my own experience with sounds and shadows, but nothing I couldn't debunk it was just my mind getting the best of me. I had been there a year before I had my first real experience with the unknown. It was my turn to clean the building outside. Like any other day, I started my vacuuming and wiping things down. I always did the restrooms last. If you've ever seen these restrooms, you would understand why. They were kind of scary and pretty dark, even with the lights on. I had finished cleaning the first floor, so I started on the restrooms, propping open the door so I could have easy access to my cleaning supplies. I started wiping down the sinks when suddenly I heard two females talking and laughing, but it sounded muffled and the words were coming in and out. My first thought was, maybe it was coming from outside, some joggers maybe? But it was still pretty dark out and the place was pretty big, they would have to be yelling at each other for me to hear them inside. It sounded more like it was coming from the hallway right outside the restroom door. I stopped what I was doing to listen and I heard laughing. Not a scary laugh, more like two ladies having a good laugh and then what sounded like one of the ladies saying, I need to get dressed and then another muffled word that I couldn't make out. That's where the conversation ended. I came out of the restroom and looked around and called out, hello? When our 10 o'clock break came around, I told my boss what I had heard. His reply was, 
Well, it is an old building. I don't think he believed much in ghosts. Word spread throughout the building to the bigger bosses upstairs, and one of them asked to hear about my experience. Feeling a little embarrassed, I told her about it, and she told me in the 1930s they had fundraisers like ballroom dancing and chuck wagon dinners for the rich. It's how they got their donations for the museum, as it was a non-profit establishment. As the days went by, I kept telling myself it was just coming from outside, but at 5 or 6 in the morning? And in this neighborhood? Another early morning, maybe two hours into our workday, I was talking to one of my co-workers from the bottom of the stairs while he was at the top of the stairs on the second floor. He did the vacuuming in the main museum every morning, so we were just talking about the stains in the carpet that needed to be removed, when out of nowhere the hat on his head came straight up high off his head, hovered above him for a few seconds, and shot straight for me, landing next to my feet. We looked at each other, and then at the hat. We started to laugh. I was scared shitless. He told me that one of the security officers told him about a little girl about six years old that haunted those stairs. There were reports of her coming down those stairs occasionally, so my co-worker claims it was just a playful gesture. But in my mind, I'm thinking, how tall can this six-year-old be? My co-worker was about six feet tall, and that hat hovered over his head another foot or more. I walked away from the stairs and wanted no part of this eight-foot six-year-old. And by the way, you can pick up your own hat. I worked there another five years, and the mornings never got any less creepy. Meanwhile, ghost stories continued to be added to the museum as the years went by. The stories are mostly playful and reliving a happy time, but it's never really eased my fears. I found out a crew from a popular ghost hunter show investigated the museum and heard they found voice recordings, or EVPs. Also, a co-worker who had been working there for many, many years told me there were seven different ghosts there in the museum. He started to tell me where each one was seen the most. After the second one, I stopped him, thinking to myself, I'd rather not know. After that, I tried cleaning in the same area as my co-worker so it wouldn't be me by myself. From then on, I always wore my headset so if there were any ghosts talking to one another, I wouldn't hear them. I didn't care to know what they were talking about. Anyhow, thank you for letting me share my story with you guys. Love the show. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. That was a good one. I like the way she was talking about that little girl that was eight foot tall. Yeah. I know, that was <laughs> throw funny. that hat up in the air. Man, that's so I weird. Want, I want nothing to do with a, a six foot, no, a eight foot tall. <laughs> eight foot tall, six, six year old. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's crazy, though. She said that they knocked the hat off, but like it tipped it in the air and like spun it for a while and it fell. Yeah, that's, Man, that is crazy. That's a trip. <laughs> yeah, line it right in front of her. Yeah. Do it. That's <laughs> weird, man. That's crazy. I'm kind of wondering what causes that. I would think a museum probably has a lot of different... I mean, every museum would have some sort of paranormal stuff yeah, in there because... Things are coming yeah. from different Yeah, artifacts. There you go. Yeah, yeah. You got artifacts that's like thousands of years old, and you never know what's attached to any what of that. What history, the history behind it, or... Yeah. Or even, yeah, like the violence behind it. Restrooms creep me out. I, I have... I'm always scared when I'm alone. Restrooms and for her to hear voices when she's in there, oh, I'll yeah. freak out. Probably when a white boat run out. It's <laughs> gotta be the worst. I mean, yeah, you're in the restroom. You're vulnerable. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's like for me. That's like a sacred, safe place. It's like the restroom. But <laughs> well, you know, that's cool that she's wearing headphones now. She says I wear headphones now, so out. yeah, <laughs> so I don't have to worry about hearing that. And I make sure there's always somebody with me. She um, mentioned also that they had a paranormal research team out there. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, wonder if they found any kind of... Yeah, I wish we could see what stuff they caught. Yeah, the evidence that they caught, if they got in there, I'm sure they did. I wonder what the history is about that. Like we said, they got artifacts that attaches themselves to items and, you know, paranormal things like that. But if this is something that reoccurs, maybe it's something that maybe was brought in like that, but the little girl got used to being there or... Or I wonder what the history is about that because they never went into that. I'd like to do yeah. some on that to well, find out what that too, is. It could be like the property it's on because I, I mean, I, we were researching other. Museums. Oh, the, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, we did have some. We have some actually here. Jazz, you know those oh, you ones. Go through your handy dandy notebook there. Know, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So we have the the Briscoe Western Art Museum. That and one is new to me. I do not believe I've ever heard of that. You Briscoe. said Briscoe. Is that Briscoe, Briscoe County? Or Briscoe. Oh, no, it's here in San Antonio. Oh, it's in San Antonio. Okay, I've never heard Chichen of that. Market Street. Oh, Market Street, downtown, yes. Yeah, what Market is that one? What does that one claim to have? I guess it formerly, it was like, formally... So you got it, yeah. There you <laughs> are. <laughs> uh, I guess it was like a circus museum. Uh, it's haunted by a man named John McMullen. He died in 1853. I guess they say he was killed during a home invasion, and there's people that believe it was uh, a stepson. 
Oh, okay, so, like a family member yeah, that yeah. yeah, that would cause that would trigger it. Yeah. yeah. What do they see? They just see him or people report to seeing like I guess shadowy apparitions, shimmery lights, loud banging, uh, cold spots. There's voices and soft whispering. So all kinds oh, of stuff. Oh, cool. There. Yeah. That's weird because I've never even heard of that place. The other one was the Texas Institute of Cultures. I know that one has some behind mm-hmm. it. Yep. What did you find on that one? There's a worker. His name's Willie. He reported having like his shirt pulled, his name being called. This is kind of creepy. He saw like a full body apparition. He said it wasn't see-through, like he couldn't see through it. It was a full body apparition. He thought it was like a Native American woman. Mm-hmm. And um, he followed her for a while and then she just disappeared. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. <laughs> and then that there's um, another guy, another employee there that he caught EV. Well, I, they caught EVPs there and he heard voices talking or like people talking. There's videos. If you go and you look it up, there's videos of the door wow, slamming. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, wow. that's crazy. I did do a little research on that. And it's always the same BS, man. Oh, they're in a sacred Indian burial yeah. ground or something You hear like that, that a lot, yeah. And you know, I, but I was looking through this. I mean, I guess nobody's really going to put it out there that they built something on an on a Indian burial ground. But I was looking to see if there was any history of any kind of Indian burial grounds here. Just, you know frontier shit just looking up not necessarily you know and i couldn't find anything i know we have old cemeteries here but Mm -hmm. that area just right across you have the alamo dome the alamo dome was built back in i want to say mid or late 80s and what happened there was they claimed there was a worker that got killed and they always say the same thing about that okay but it was after it was built they were building some kind of like a home depot had some of these sheds or something like that and i don't know how but one i don't know if there was a crane moving it but it fell on top of them and killed them okay one i did hear about though and I, this did happen and it was this one was sad there was a stunt show happening well these two cars were supposed to collide in midair one was coming off another ramp and the other one was driving down the other ramp where they're supposed to meet in midair and crash into each other and drop and they dropped on other cars what happened though was one went a little over and well it's kind of bad because the other driver that the one that went on top he actually slammed into the cab of that car and well there was massive head trauma and well the guy died one of them died that's okay. crazy but what happened and sad too his uh, wife and his three year old son were there and the guy had oh, just come man. out of retirement just to do that oh, so terrible. you have that and then on top of that you have before it was built this is way back on San Antonio's uh, SAPD cold case files well I had read one where there was a lady of the night a prostitute she was raped and murdered on those grounds actually it wasn't on those grounds it was nearby so they were saying that you can see the same lady in the parking lot it's a ghost and that comes out and it scares the hell out of people there and supposedly they see the worker and that other guy who got killed roaming the halls not the halls but you know the stadium itself or right. the, by the seats the area yeah, yeah sure. and I, that's it or they'll be down in the grounds you know like in, and i was like wow. i was looking that up and i was like wow that's true well, where the lady got murdered was at a school, right? I mean, it was right by there. It's like about maybe, I want to say about three or four blocks away. It's an elementary school by there. I don't know if I should give the name, but uh, it's right by there. It's right off one of the main streets that's right there. Well, that lady's corpse was actually found at that elementary school. That school was haunted. And then here we go again. And it's always the infamous janitor who got killed. <laughs> but they say they see things there and that they hear voices, door slamming, same thing as uh, anybody else, but uh, why is it though, man? The damn janitor always, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I think the janitor is always by himself, though. That's just it. I mean, yeah, like at but, night, you know? Yeah, or, and the, the, I guess because you do get bored, there ain't shit to do there at night. And like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna mix these two chemicals, see what happens, <laughs> man. Yeah. Next thing you know, you know, yeah, <laughs> janitor dies airport. in a terrible explosion. But all that area, it's bad too. I mean, yeah. I'm not knocking anybody who lives there, but it's a bad neighborhood. Right. It's a, no, it's we a, we grew up not too far from there, and we know it's a bad area. Uh, growing up, it was really bad. It, it was, and so you got terrible things that go on sometimes around there. It could be a combination of just different things, but it's just that whole area because you were talking about the Texas Institute of Culture is right across the highway from the Alamo Dome, and then Market Street where the other one, what was it, the Briscoe? Briscoe. Okay, Briscoe. That's that's man. Yeah. Gotta be like another three or four streets up. It's not that far from there, yeah. you know. Maybe a 
mile. So it's it's, it's it, you know it's, there yeah. you go. And that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I wonder if it, it, you know if that has anything to do with with anything. I, I'm not really sold on the Indian burial ground, but I do know that there are hauntings going on there. And, the Alamo Dome, that's kind of creepy too because that's kind of, you know, a big deal. And then the, the elementary, how many elementary schools? Do? And hopefully that's going to be one that we're going to discuss also uh, haunted schools and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, we have an episode on haunted <laughs> yeah, schools. Yeah, because even they're <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. But uh, I'd like to find out exactly what they found. And even then, too, the one you were talking about, the, the Texas, man, we got to do something there, man, at the Texas uh, Cultural Institute Institute of Culture. There you go. I keep saying something it wrong. like that, yeah. yeah. It's the same thing, though. I mean, really, again, museums, they got stuff from around the world. So there's bound to be yeah, God all knows kinds of crazy stuff there. What you're bringing there. in. Yeah. Fighting in, so. Yeah, definitely. Some of those artifacts have seen things like violence and stuff like that. They've been through, you know, maybe at the scene or something. And Disasters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never know, man. That's just it. I mean, this stuff, they got crazy stuff there. <laughs> that's awesome. I like that, man. That's a, a good one. Yeah. I, I got to remember the story. <laughs> well, we love telling our stories, but we'd also like to remind you guys that we want to hear yours. What's that phone number, Rob? Okay, the phone number here is 210 210- Nine zero one eight six six six, and remember that's a three minute call. So if you go over, make sure you call again, and just let us know what uh, the second part is, what story it is too. Boy, they didn't get it in there good. Dave is really good at that. That's right. And if you don't want to call in, if you're shy or something like that, email us info at rigamortisparanormal.com, or you can just visit our website rigamortisparanormal.com and there you can actually just submit it there so either way whichever way you want to get in touch with us please do we want to hear your story our next story comes to us from i guess our childhood memories <laughs> yeah hey, here we go again yeah some crazy stuff uh windy and sean the windy and sean story yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah it sounds like a show <laughs> they were family friends actually my mom and dad knew their parents and i know we knew sean that buck tooth kid man he was a pain in the ass <laughs> But uh, we used to play with them when we were younger. Man, I don't know if you remember this, David. Man, we always got stuck with weird people, man. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, we God, did, man. Because, I mean, well, the, well, the, Maybe um, it was the, us that was weird. <laughs> we got yeah, stuck with yeah. weird people. No, but we were docile. I mean, we just kind of looked at people like, huh? Okay, this is this is what I'm talking about. Why? Because you're going to laugh. Because I remember spending the night there, man. And I had to piss like a motherfucker, man. I had to pee real bad. Like, I, I could, like, already, like, oh, like... <laughs> I was hurting already and her dad was in the restroom and I think it was Wendy who's like dad Rob's gotta use the restroom and he's like huh oh okay dude opens the door dude and he's standing there this, this, okay mind you this guy's like six foot two like 260 pounds man <laughs> and it's, it, it, he's just standing there in the newest underwear I have ever seen just standing there just uh, just like he brand new pack to show him off. no he just <laughs> no, he was shaving he's like come on in go pee and I'm looking at him like ah I, I, I don't know you, man. I'm not going to piss him. But I, 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 he was the nicest guy in the world. Really, he was a cool guy. So he was just like, you know, like looking at me like, you know, like, you had to pee out there. I was like, man, I ain't peeing. And, this, and the guy's just standing there. That's all he's in. Just wearing his tidy whities man. Rowdy V8s, man. Just rolling, man. And they're brand new, man. I don't know any. I don't remember anybody that had a Yeah. They had they, no, they were. The I looked at him and I was like. Uh, like, they, I didn't know they got that white. <laughs> like, yeah, you know. So yeah, he's over there all shaving all cool. And I'm just kind of waiting, like acting like I had to pee, man. And I'm just like, and as soon as he kind of, I guess he got the hit. The guy was real cool. He walked out, man, just. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't even know where I brought that up, man. But well, yeah, it's just, well, cause, okay, here we go, the same thing. Because remember the haunted house that we were up? We were up in uh, Brownfield, Texas, when we were talking, when we were uh, yeah. chopping cotton. Mm-hmm. Same haunted house. You remember that night when there was a big ass tornado in Lubbock, Texas? Yeah. And we were like only 30 miles out. So I remember that. It was bad. I remember we were scared shitless. We had the radio on. And like, you know, all the Lego sets were just kind of like, you know, bracing for impact. So the wind was blowing real bad. And my dad, he was always in San Antonio. Yeah. And he would come down. Well, he came down with his buddy, Dean. <laughs> now, Dean remind me of Barney Rubble. He was short, <laughs> but he had this rowdy beer gut, man. So And he was real cool, too, man. Yeah, so, man, all hell was that night. Thank God nothing bad happened. You know, it just like it rained real hard. We had the hell and all that. I don't remember if you remember this, but there was just too many people to sleep in that house. So dad's all like, ah, yeah, I think we should be all fine. Uh, just, uh, you know what? The boys can sleep with you out in your van. I mean, that's <laughs> like the Barney Rubble's van. And he's like, yeah, that's fine, right? 
So they're putting colchons and blankets down for us and like work pillows and like work. I was already just scared because I didn't want to go outside. It was bad. Yeah, me and you were both like, man, you know, the, the tornadoes and oh, yeah, just pass me. Yeah. Oh, it's not going to come back. Yeah, I'm like, well, yeah, you come out here to sleep, yeah, man. Yeah, volunteering us to go yeah. sleep outside in a van when there's a tornado out there. Yeah, so we're all on the cool, man. And then like, so we're. Guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, but this is a trip, man. And the guy was like Popeye, man. He had big ass forearms and stuff like that. He's like a yeah. big, rowdy beer gut. Man, just whips off his shirt, pulls his pants off. He's in his tidy whities And we're just kind of looking at each other like, man, we're in a van. We're little kids, and we're in there with this guy, like, you Grown know. man. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> That's tidy white. Yeah. Like, they threw us in with right. him. <laughs> and the guy is just all on the cool. Yeah. Ain't you boys going to get comfortable? Chris, <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, to you. Yeah. Uh, it's like, hi there. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> like, I'm trying to go to sleep. Yeah, he was like, I was like, hell no, I was tying my shoelaces and like, you ain't getting me to get my So nobody mean I he didn't mean nothing by it. That's right. just the he way he nice slept. Guy. Yeah. I mean I'm not and I'm no way in in in, in, in Bob too. I wasn't uh, the other guy from the other story. They were good people, they just they slept in their underwear, man. That was just something weird for us back then, you know. Yeah, we were new and, to this. Yeah, you know, and uh, these guys just slept comfy, man. So the, <laughs> that was a trip, man. Yeah, I remember no like, ah, seeing the guy pull off his, man, hey, can you help me with that boot? <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, uh, going back to Bob, here we go, we're going way off, man. Okay, going back to Bob. Um, Bob was a good guy. Uh, his kids were brats. I remember one night, I'm not too clear on this. I think you're a little bit more clear on this, Dave. But, but I had heard what happened, but I was, I just didn't remember that story that well. I didn't remember, yeah. but you can refresh my memory a little well, bit better. It's weird because I do remember it was it was crazy. We weren't here. We didn't spend a night this night. This was, this story was actually told to us. What happened was Wendy and Sean. Yeah, had I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And they were going to bed. You know, they're kind of going to sleep. And all of a sudden, their closet door opens, and the lights were out and stuff. But they they heard the door open. You know, whipped open. Anyhow, when the door opens, I guess it was light in the room. I don't I don't know where it was coming from, but it was light enough to see that when the door opened, they had a doll that was in their closet, and it was like a Raggedy Ann type doll. Uh huh. But it was a clown though so i i don't know if that makes sense but it is you know it's like one of those yeah, really, yeah, yeah yeah and uh but it had a clown face on it and stuff anyway this thing was laughing at them oh man but it was laughing loud it was like a real loud oh, yeah. laugh it wasn't I like I a, remember this one yeah, yeah it wasn't yeah. like a quiet you know <laughs> you know it was like really loud it was like laughing loud and it started to move and it started walking but it was still in the, in the closet man they started yelling at the top of their lungs the dad ran in. What the hell? It turns the lights on. Under room, man. Came in just tidy whities brightening the whole damn room up. Yeah. Well, he, turned the, he turned the light on, but yeah, he came in. And man, they the same thing. The doll didn't stop, man. It was still going, man. Oh, well, that's a trip, it man. It didn't care, man. It had tidy whities and all. He's like, you know what? I'm still laughing. I'm laughing at you now. <laughs> I remember they had all kinds of baseball gear. I don't know. I, I don't know if you remember that, but they had like all kinds of, they had uh, bats and baseball gloves. I mean, stuff that we yeah. didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't yeah, have yeah. that growing up, man. We had, uh, we had a, a ball of... Uh, <laughs> we had uh, oven mitts, yeah, right? Oven, oven mitts and a ball of, uh, of uh, duct tape, you know, for a baseball, you know? <laughs> the broom uh, handle and stuff, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> but they had all kinds of, the you know, fancy gear, man, and they, they started chucking it at them, man. They were throwing baseball bats. Yeah, I remember uh, that part. I gloves, did, yeah. Uh, they, man, yeah, they're throwing everything at this thing. I don't know what happened. I guess they finally left the room and must have died down eventually. And they got rid I of that remember. doll. Yeah, yeah. I know they were real religious, yeah. and they got rid of that doll. And they were like, "That's when we started learning about haunted items and things getting attached to things." It was there, and yeah. there was a mattress story you remember, somewhere. I remember the mattress? Yeah, too. yeah. There was a mattress story that somebody told us I about. Don't where that one came from, either. It was a it was a haunted mattress, and that people would have bad dreams and bad things would happen to them there. Yeah, laying on a, you lay your head on it. I remember they told us you put your head down on it and, it and just start yeah, whispering. Yeah. You see, you hear talking all. All of a sudden, as soon as you put your head on it, you hear talking, whispering, and just talking into your ear. And then pick their head up right away, and you know, it stopped. Where in the hell did we get that I story? I don't know who that was, man. But yeah, that, well, know, were, that wasn't mom, though. No, <laughs> it, it, they, well, they were claiming that, like, they passed the bridge, and they threw it off the bridge, and <laughs> they can hear, ah! 
Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like they, they they could hear the the mattress the screaming. Mattress yeah, mattress yeah screaming. that's what they were saying. Like, and I, yeah. I, okay, then mind you too, like we're real young, so th- this could have been like, well, these kids will swallow any shit, man. They're scared. Like, get their ass to bed. If not, yeah. the mattress is gonna talk to you. Yeah, you know. So that's, that's true, maybe. <laughs> but I thought that was an awesome story. Was Wendy cool. and Sean's story. That one was a good one. I do remember that. I do remember when somebody talking about how they were throwing the baseball bats and gloves at them, and even the dad was too. Yeah, he got real scared and chucked Sean at him and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't remember how it ended, though. I don't remember if I know just, that they were saying because his mom. I, I, you know what, Dave? I don't remember. I think if I'm not mistaken. The mom's name was Diane, and she wow. was—I think that's mom and, 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 and her. I don't know how that popped in there, yeah. but like she was—I think she's actually the one. Well, it might have been Bob too, but like I don't remember who told the story, but we did hear it. I remember them saying that they got rid of that doll. You know, that was one of the first things they did, and they were a cool family, really. The mom and dad were real cool. Yeah, and, they were nice. Yeah. So uh, that's one of those things. I don't know. I, that's one. Of, that's where when I was talking about earlier, that's you know maybe haunted things that come attached to things or something like that and that's weird you gotta watch everything that you pick up man you go to the yard sale yeah, yard you go sale, to you a yeah a, a, a thrift store, store or like yeah. and it's not everything but it is some things you just don't want you're like scratching that why is this happening now you know okay uh, you know the dibbing box man too is like uh, you know they pick that oh, up yeah. for yard sale too yeah, yeah you, know, you just never know what you're gonna get man. exactly and that's the <laughs> thing right there man yeah, and you know cool guitars or something oh man yeah. I want that guitar right there and then you yeah. get it and you just have a big tear because you have to get rid of it <laughs> Like, yeah. but I like it. It's like, yes, Cheaper but your hands, even. yeah, but your hands keep starting on fire every time you play. It. I was like, yeah, but it's still cool. I'll be okay. <laughs> Can I wear gloves? <laughs> but we just gotta be careful and stuff like that. And I think that's everywhere. I mean, that's just my opinion. You know, don't go by what I say. I do believe. Yeah, I do believe in that. Yeah, that was a good story. I mean, that was actually. awesome. That was some cool stuff. Again, like we keep mentioning we want to hear your stories exactly we would much rather hear from y'all i mean well yes we're hearing from y'all but like i know me and david have a tendency of going off track it's just to give y'all a little bit of insight like uh we said we have experienced plenty and if not the people around us have experienced plenty of paranormal and ghostly things so and it's it's always cool to share with y'all but man we really want y'all stories so keep them coming please yeah definitely what's that phone number that phone number is 210 Nine zero one eight six six six. And again, if you want to email us, you can email us at info at rigamortisparanormal.com or visit us online at rigamortisparanormal.com. And also, we're part of a new podcast network that's going on. That's right. Alamo City Podcast Network. They're out of San Antonio. There are a bunch of people from San Antonio. It's there. just brand new. It's in its right. infancy right now. I'm trying to get off the ground now, but uh, I'm sorry, David. <laughs> no, I was going to say, yeah, we definitely, we, we want to help these guys grow because, well, we want to be part of them too. Yeah, exactly. And what we're doing, we're just pushing San Antonio as a whole because there's so much stuff here in San Antonio again not just the paranormal stuff but we, we got other people entertainment we got, yeah, we no, got music, great everything. music uh, great entertainment we've got great great food you name it I mean everything crafts whatever it's a great city great town we just love being part of it and we want to help them grow so make sure to like them on Facebook you can just do a search for them they're uh, Alamo City Podcast Network that does it for episode 7 thanks for listening we'll see you next week bye bye <laughs>